Hello everybody, this is Froyo Bobbin here, and for the first time in a month and a half, welcome back to Trades Simulator 3. Yes, we are finally back on this game, and today uh, we'll be taking a look at the recently released British Columbia route. Yes, new route, uh, which of course happens to be in Kanada Nada, uh, and uh, more specifically Upper Canada. Well, Upper, but that I mean, well, you know, up, up north, I guess you could say. In British Columbia. Yes, we're visiting British Columbia, which, um, as we sort of discussed in this channel, is the land of the slowest ferries in the world. But thankfully, we're not going to be driving ferries, we'll be driving trains. Yes, because trains are superior in, in every single way. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, British Columbia route uh, just, well, I say just came out. Came out actually about a month ago for Train Samara 3. Uh, but, of course, I've just now got around to reviewing it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, let's take a look at everything they get here in the British Columbia route here in Trains Simulator 3. But before we do that, be sure to check out my Fiverr gig. Link is in the description. Alrighty then, so only a handful of locals and rolling stock here in this route. Uh, three different, well, I say three, well, two different locomotives, well, one of the times being two different liveries, and, um, yeah, uh, but of course it's all, uh, Canadian stuff, and, uh, only a handful of cars, though, as well, a couple of which is related to British Columbia, but some of which is just, uh, stuff that we've already had before, so, yeah. Alright, let's take a look at everything that you get, starting with this. So, starting off here, we have the, um, we have the SD40-2 in the BC Rail livery, yeah, the BC Rail red, white, and blue. I believe this one was actually released as a standalone DLC um, a little while back, but of course now been bundled with this route, so we'll get to take a look at it uh, for the first time. Also, I do apologize in advance if my nose sounds a little bit stuffy in this video. I don't know why I have such a runny nose today all of a sudden, but it's fair regardless, so here we are. But yeah, the SD4-2 in the BC Rail livery. How about that? I don't think that BC will actually exist anymore. I think they were actually absorbed by uh, Canadian National, or was it CP Rail? I don't actually know, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, BC Rail, Red, White, and Blue. I actually really like this livery, actually, so I'm actually happy that we have this here in uh, Trains Simulator 3. S4-2, though, of course, not new to Trains 3, but, uh, oh well. Uh, let's take a look at the interior cab. And I believe the cab is the same old S4-2 cab. Oh, it's actually the GP4-2 cab. Oh, okay, well, there you go. Okay, yeah, cab. I believe the same old cab that I've seen several times now here in Trains Simulator 3, so I don't think it's been too much time over this cab. Yeah, I think it is pretty much the same old cab that we've had for, uh, well, basically ever. So, yeah, cab is the same as it's ever been. Alright, let's do the horn. Okay, at least the horn and bell uh, sound pretty good. Nice, high-quality recordings. So, um, let's actually let's it again. Yeah, there you go, then. Uh, well, there it is, then, the uh, S4, S2 in the BC Red, White, White, and Blue livery. Alright, up next we have a couple of box cars, which happen to be in a couple of uh, British Columbia liveries. Uh, first up, we have this, which is a very low poly asset, I must say. Uh, this is the 40-foot 40, uh, 40 reefer in the British Columbia Railway livery, number 839. So yeah, this is a uh, pff, this is a pretty old asset. Yeah, I'm not sure why this is even here, but here you are then. A 40-foot uh, reefer. Uh, reefer. Re re reefer car in the British Columbia Railway green thing. So, yeah, there you go. Rather unimpressive, but here it is nonetheless. Well, right back, we have another pretty basic boxcar. Uh, there's the 50-foot boxcar in the BC Rail livery, number uh, 5744. Uh, another rather unimpressive asset here. Very low poly, not much detail at all. Um, yep, it exists, I guess. certainly exists. Alrighty then. Well, the next look what we have here is one that's a bit more impressive. This is the uh, Canadian National ES44AC. Um, I don't think this look was new to Train Summer 3 either. I think we've actually had this as, as a standalone DLC and I think this might have been included in one of the other Canadian routes. I'm not too sure though. I'm sure one of you guys will correct me on this, but regardless here it is in this route, the Canadian National ES44AC. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I get not sure if we've had this before or if this is new, but uh, here you are anyways. Yeah. Nice. So that's a detailed look wolf, though. I, I won't give it that. Alright. So there you have it. Alright, then it's your cab. Come on. Come, what? 
Why are you doing? Why are you doing? There we go. Okay, that was a quite more difficult than I thought it would be. All right, the cab of the ES44 AC. Um, I think this might be the same cab as the uh, as the one the Norfolk Southern one. So, yeah, I'll take a look at this briefly here. Um, yep, there's the uh, the actual cab controls, and here's the rest of the cab. Then, um, yep, pretty good cab in this one. Yes, sir. Alrighty then. Of course, it's better look at the roof if you like roofs. And there's a light there. Just, you know. <laughs> Which I don't think turns on in this game, but oh well. And there's some more details on the roof. And there you go. Alright then. Horn and bell. Whoops, I didn't activate both the horn and bell at the same time. Okay, pretty good horn, but a bit of a washed out e-bell, but there you go then. The Canadian National ES board for AC. Okay, well, right behind it, we have a couple more uh, wagons. This one's actually, well, wagons slash freight cars. This one's actually uh, ex exclusive, I believe. This is the 73-foot uh, center beam car in the uh, BC livery, or B coal, as we see down there. Although that touch is very low poly, so I, uh, yeah, I, I thought that was just because it wasn't loading in probably, but no, I think that's just how the texture is, so, yeah. Um, so there you go, this is like a, uh, yeah, this is a, what's it called again? A, a center beam. Yeah, okay. Uh, I think we both had the center beam car in previous, uh, welds, but I don't think we've had it in this livery before, so this is cool, I guess. Yeah, a bit new and interesting, so there you go. Alrighty then. And up next is something that is not new uh, to Trace Mode 3. In fact, we've added a few different routes now. Uh, this is the Skeleton Log Flat Car. Um, yeah, I've had this now in a few different routes, so not new to Trace Mode 3. Uh, it is a pretty, pretty nice looking asset, actually, though. There's a lot of detail and stuff on here. Um, <laughs> although, it's not new to Train Simulator 3, though. I've had this in a couple different routes, so. Yeah, my nose is running really badly, so I do apologize if I'm going to blow my nose in this review because, yeah, I don't know where it came from, but uh, nothing I can do, so, yeah. So, we're going to do this. All right, there's the Skeleton Log Flat Car. All right, for the found new locomotive, well, I say new locomotive, uh, this, of course, is the uh, SC4-2, so I believe it's the same engine as the other one. There might be a couple slight differences here and there, but I'm not too sure. This one, though, is in the uh, British Columbia Railway Green Livery. Yes, it's green. Which, actually, this is a pretty cool livery as well. I like the, uh, the, 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 the lighting bolts on the middle part. That's pretty cool. Look at the S4-2 in the British Columbia Railway green livery. Again, not sure if this is new or we've had this as like a standalone DLC or something, but here it is. All right. All right, to your cab. If the game will let me in the interior cab, come on. There we go. And I believe this is the same, yep, same GP42 cab as the other locomotive. Alright, so the horn and bell. And same horn and bell as the other one, okay. Alright, then we have a couple hoppers then. Uh, we have the uh, BPRR 4 bay hopper multi versions, which we find in a bunch of different routes. So the really with this route, uh, we only get the multi 1 and 2 versions, so uh, yeah. Um, not sure why they didn't include the uh, three and four verse, like doing basically every other route, but whatever. Again, I still have no idea what's the difference between the uh, the multi versions they get in certain DLC routes versus the uh, the regular ones they get with the default game. Uh, so if somebody would, would like to explain that to me, please do, because <laughs> I still know what the difference is. Because well, I just don't. And of course, he's number two version, which is in just an all brown livery, uh, with no yellow stuffs on it. And, um, yeah, not much to say about either of these hoppers, so there you have it. Alrighty then, so there it is. That is all the locals and rogues I gave with this route. Uh, kind of a small list this time. You don't get a lot, although you do get these, you do at least get three locomotives, which are all rather different from each other, well, at least in terms of delivery. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, and you get a, some, well, not much free rogue stock, but a mm, couple bits of free rogue stock, so there's that much. And uh, now let's zoom out. Uh, and this is actually the uh, Prince Rupert. Yeah, this actually... Yeah, if you actually want to know where in British Columbia this route, this route is based, it's actually based in uh, Prince Rupert. And um, somebody actually pointed this out uh, to me, actually, when I, um, or when I, well, I'll point out, well, when I 
sort of well, when that came out. Um, I don't even think this route is actually like a brand new route. I believe this route is actually a remake. Well, not a remake, but a remaster of a uh, of a route called Prince Rupert, uh, which of course we've had in trains for a while. Um, now I've never actually driven the original uh, Prince Rupert route uh, in trains, uh, although well, no, so this is gonna be a new experience for me. But anyway, you got like a coal mine over here. There's like a little thing that's like that runs by the uh, run the river here, which looks pretty nice. Right, you can see this in the uh, in the scenario today. Uh, we have a uh, port here as well as another harbor. And it was of this stuff here, which and we have this uh, this container port here, and before arriving here at this yard here, and that's the whole route. So yeah, linear route this time, um, as well. I was well, most of these are actually network style routes that we get here in Transmit Three, but this one is linear, which means you can only go from A to B, and that's it. All right, then. Well, that is everything they get here in the uh, British Columbia route here in Transmit Three. So let's now take a look at the scenarios and do some driving. Alrighty then, so here are all these scenarios they get with this route. Uh, as per usual, we get four pre scripted scenarios. We have the Boxcars one here, which covers which has the uh, the green SC40-2. Uh, we have Center which used the uh, Canadian uh, ES44. Uh, Coleman, which used the uh, BC Rail Red, White, and Blue SC40-2. Uh, and we also get a scenario called Taurus Express, which utilizes the uh, Rocky Mountaineer, which is default content here in Trace Number 3. And you also get a bunch of free drive scenarios as per usual. And the scenario, that, the scenario that we're going to be doing today is the coal mine scenario, which utilizes the uh, the red, white, blue H4-2 because that's, well, it's British Columbia, so i got to drive a British Columbia locomotive in the most recognizable livery. Um, so yeah, coal mine. A coal train is waiting to be loaded and delivered to the harbor for further processing today. So yeah, I believe this is going to be a pretty simple scenario, uh, but we might have to do some loading and unloading as well. So uh, yeah, let's get to it. And here we are. And, um, oh... Which, what do you know, we're actually pulling the uh, BPR wagons. Oh, but it's got the uh, rocket mounted background, so that's pretty cool. Alright, so here we are then. Alright, good day. Your task today is to load, is to first load the coal train. Okay, so we're doing some loading. Okay. Uh, once loaded, turn around and head to towards the harbor. Upon arrival, you'll need to park the train at the designated area of the harbor. And try the procedure to follow correctly, maintain a safe and efficient operation of the journey. Alrighty then. So, okay, so we are... Backing up here. Okay, yes, we are. Okay, we're back up to the uh, coal mine. Okay. <laughs> actually, loaded into this scenario, actually, uh, while I was playing the video. Um, just to make sure I get everything sorted out. Alright, but here we are then. British Columbia in train scenario 3. Uh, hang on. Wait, the light's red. Uh oh. That's not good. Uh, is the point set right for us? Or do I have to wait for somebody? Oh, we just started. Come on. Okay. Well, let's see what the situation with the points is. Um. Nah. It looks like if all the signals are signals, all the points are locked, and I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to pull up into here. So, uh, <sighs> absolutely smashing start. We just started. Yeah. First train we've been in a month and a half, and already we got some. Oh. No, nope, I guess the game heard my complaints because it now cleared up, cleared up the route. Okay. All right, whatever. All right, then. What's getting applause? My nose sounds all stuffy, and I have to blow my nose sometimes. I uh, don't know what happened. I just woke up today, and my nose is all runny and stuff. And uh, well, but uh, gotta do this video today because I realize I won't be able to uh, for the rest of the week. Okay, are we gonna be allowed past this red light? Or is it gonna? Yep. <sighs> So, yeah, first thing of the day. Yeah, all right, I'll be back. Oh. Uh, never mind. <laughs> okay, never mind. I thought it was going to kick me out to the main menu there, but nope, never mind. As it turns out, we will actually be able to continue with the scenario. Okay, fine. <laughs> all right, whatever. Fine by me. All right, so the junctions, because I think we'll need those for this uh, scenario. So, yeah. Alrighty then, so, yeah, first train video in the month and a half, um, in case you're wondering why I haven't actually done one of these videos in a while, it's because, uh, well, um, well, it's because I've been, when I do some other types of videos, I want to do the, uh, experimental gameplay videos, and, you know, I had already done, uh, four train videos before that, so I kind of want to take a little break of a break from this game here on this channel, do some other stuff, um, and, um, yeah, and I, 
I did actually see the uh, the release of this route when it actually first came out about a month ago, but I deliberately decided not to do a video on this route because I wanted to do the other videos first. So, yeah. Uh, but none of those videos are, well, done for now. Uh, I figured, well, now's a good time to do this video. So, yeah. So, yeah, here it is. Train Smith 3, the return. And, um, yeah, of course, we happen to be in British Columbia. Now, like I said, um, I'm not sure if this route is, like, new. Actually, no, I don't think it is. Yeah, because I, I actually do remember a route, uh, that was called Prince Rupert, uh, from, like, I think it was in, I think that was in, it was in Trains too. I think. I'm not too sure, though, but, yeah. So, yeah, I don't think this is a new route. I think this is actually another, uh, remaster of an older route. Oh, I'm not too sure. I, like I said, I have, I never played... The uh, original Prince Rupert route, so you guys are gonna have to let me know on that. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, we're about to approach the uh, coal mines. Let's make sure that we're coming in here smoothly. Because yeah, I do believe we are gonna have to. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to load all these up, so we have to go through here a bit slowly, so we can load everything up properly. Uh, okay, so down just a little bit here. Uh, let's see. Okay, 10 miles per hour speed limit. Okay, blue's logo with coal. Okay, that's exactly what we're doing. Okay. Uh, so, all the wagons... <laughs> oh, actually, they call them wagons. So, yeah, that's where my, uh, British terminology comes from. Uh... Oh, no, that was good. Okay, never mind. Wait, how... Oh, Okay. I'll, just, I'll go through this heaven, though, just to make sure that everything gets filled up. Alright. So we got 20 coal cars to fill up. Alright. Nice. Alright, here's at the uh, coal mine. I guess here in Prince Rupert. I don't actually know anything about Prince Rupert in real life, by the way. Um, t actually, most of uh, most of my knowledge of British Columbia actually comes from uh, Hubi, who you may know... Uh, Oh, here we go again with the red. Okay, yeah, I guess. Okay, well, I guess we're allowed to ignore the uh, red light messages today because, you know, usually here in Train Silver 3, if you run a red light, it just instantly kicks you out of the scenario. Although you can, of course, get back into the scenario if you do some uh, stuff to. Well, if you just like the scenario that you were playing in the main menu, then yeah. But um, it seems that with the scenario, they, I guess they haven't actually coded in the, uh, the ability where it kicks you out of the game, so that's good at least. Because it seems like the. Uh... Red light glitch is, well, I think glitch, well, I think it is a glitch, actually. Hang on. I think it's contagious, actually, because, uh, the reason why I haven't, I, why I haven't been able to make more than two, uh, Trace and Classic videos as part of my experimental gameplay series is because of a, uh, red light issue over in that game that I haven't at the time to fix. Uh, so, yeah. Alright, we're about to reach the last co-oper, so we'll be able to, or should be able to, alright, push it around, okay, good. All right, and actually, I'm going to use the opportunity to save my progress here in the scenario because I will need to uh, come back later. And uh, it turns out the save save such a thing doesn't work, right? so that's nice. I'll save another one actually because it can mess it up sometimes. I'll save another copy of this as well. And uh, there you go. All right, let's go. Oh, come on. There we go. No, nope. okay, at the other end of the train. All right, let's go. <laughs> Okay, off to, um, off to the harbor, I guess. All right. Why can't I select the train? This is... Uh, man, train's really acting up today, isn't it? <laughs> yep. Oh, come on. Get me to the front of the train. We're almost there. I oh, think because we're in this section here. That might be why. Hmm. Okay, well, whatever. Come on. Actually, can I do this? Ah, oh, of course, it doesn't keep me at the front of the train. Fair enough. Alright, come on. There we go, finally. Alright, here we go then. British Columbia. And as I was saying before, most of my knowledge of British Columbia actually comes from uh, Hoobie, who you may know from some of the live streams I've done. And, um, that of course, also the voice of uh, Bill in uh, Bill and Ted, which, yeah, that's coming pretty soon, actually, so get ready for that. Um, but yeah, most of my knowledge of British Columbia comes from him, um, because of course he lives in British Columbia, uh, 
And it's also how I learned about uh, BC Fairies. And uh, how BC Fairies is utterly terrible. And yeah, I was so upset to learn about BC Fairies. I made an entire video about them basically roasting them. Which, you know what's funny? Uh, the uh, BC Fairies video, right there, that I made a couple years ago. Well, we were going April Fool's Day. That video's actually been really popping off lately. Like, it's getting a lot of views. And, um... I'm not really sure to feel about that, to be honest with you. Yeah, I guess YouTube must be putting the video like up in the recommendations, though. So that's uh, yeah, that's a bit about that. But that's a positive side to that, though. This will be getting ad revenue. So yeah. In fact, uh, I'm actually close to making uh, two dollars uh, from that video. So yeah. Um. And British Columbia as a place in general is just weird to me. Well, at least for the guys of Phobia it is. Maybe British Columbia is actually a fine place, actually, in real life. Um, but of course, Ubi's always showing me the, uh, the older parts of it, you know? I mean, I mean, you got BC Ferris, which half of their fleet is just old, outdated rubbish. Um, and of course, you also have other ferry operators in there as well, who also use old equipment, because I guess everything in British Columbia must be old. Um, what else? Um, yeah. Well, I guess British Club isn't all that. They do also have the uh, West Coast Express, um, which uses the uh, well, which is I would I won't say modern rolling stock, but at least more modern than what BC Ferries uses. So I'll say that much. Um, in fact, I think even this uh, yeah, you see this Rocky Mountaineer train. I believe this train actually runs out of uh, uh, well, runs in British Columbia as well. Yeah, because. Um, I believe actually uh, Victor Tanzik uh, actually made a, a video of his trip to Canada and he actually rode the uh, Rocky Mountaineer, so yeah. So that was pretty neat. Um, oh, there's a barn there. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Because uh, it's why not too, not too long ago who actually went to a, a farm in uh, British Columbia. And it was quite honestly one of the worst farms I've ever seen. <laughs> and the funny thing is that Hubie actually mentioned that one of the, uh, I guess one of the people that actually run the um, run the farm is actually from uh, the east part of Germany. Which I interpreted as East Germany. So hey, that means that this farm is communist. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, so yeah. So yeah, British Columbia. Um... It's an interesting place, to say the least, and, um, yeah. Um, I will say, though, most of my knowledge of British Columbia is actually in the, uh, in the Metro Vancouver area, because that's, like, well, the most metropolitan area of British Columbia. Um, I think they also got Skytrain over in, uh, British Columbia as well. Not much I can say about Skytrain, though, that exists. Um, I believe the uh, Amtrak Cascades also goes to Vancouver, British Columbia, um, and as well as the uh, V Rail Canadian route. So yeah, but of course both of those goes to Vancouver. Although we're up in uh, Prince Rupert, which is much more north. So um, yes. Okay, well come on, you can accelerate. Right? So yeah. Um, British Columbia is certainly a place. Yes, indeed. Actually, you want to know how I initially learned about BC Rail? I say learned. Well, sort of got slightly more familiar with it. Um, it was actually through uh, Sparta Remixes, actually. Yeah. Um, a lot of you guys will probably have not know what I'm talking about, but there was this user club. I think his name was Zozy1231, I think it was. And he actually made uh, multiple Sparta Remixes, actually, of uh, BC Rail trains, so... That was actually my, I think that was like my first exposure to BC Rail, and, um, yeah. Um, but I guess British, uh, BC Rail doesn't actually exist anymore. I guess they were actually absorbed by, uh, I don't know, one of the two big Canadian freight railroads. So, yeah. Alright. This part actually pretty interesting. We're going through a, uh, well... It's a force section. So yeah, uh, British Columbia. It did. It, it's the place. Uh, I guess this could conclude my little, I guess, ramble about my thoughts about British Columbia. Um, 
Um, well, besides that, I'm not sure what else to say, uh, in regards to just other topics. Um, yeah, Build Season 5 has been progressing uh, pretty well. I've actually moved on to the uh, editing stage of Season 5. And, um, well, speed up Season 5. I actually prepare for a uh, Build Season 5 live stream next week, so. Yeah, uh, I might, uh, might already have that as the, I might already have that scheduled as of when this video goes up, but, uh, yep, there you go. And, uh, yeah. Um, I guess in terms of Train Simulator 3 happening, there hasn't actually been very much. In fact, despite the fact that this route actually came out last month, there hasn't actually been a new route since then. So, um, yeah, so August... Yeah, August was actually a pretty quiet month for new releases uh, here in uh, Train Simulator 3, so I didn't really miss much, you know. Kind of got away with not doing any uh, Train Simulator last month, so yeah, here it is, British Columbia. Despite the fact this route came out a month ago, it is actually, like I said, the most recent route released to date for Train Simulator 3, so yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, in terms of what route's actually coming next Train Simulator 3, I actually don't know. So... Well, I haven't had to check the uh, trains three, their trains Discord server much recently, so I'm actually not sure, or not entirely sure what the happenings are there, but, um, yeah. But guys, we'll see soon what, uh, what, whatever, well, I say soon. Uh, I say soon because, like I said, it has been now a month since this route came out, and so I do think that the next train route might be due soon. I'm not sure, though. Now, with that being said, though, I do have plans to make a, uh, a train Smarter 3 video for next week as well, next Saturday. However, if a new route does not release for Train Simulator 3, then the next Train Simulator video will instead be a route re-review. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and my nose is still running. <laughs> yep. So, there you go. So, we're actually on the road. Oh, we're about to get to the, uh, the corner. Okay. All right. This scenario actually won't be that long. Yeah. Oh, well. Um... Besides that, I haven't got much to talk about at the moment. Um... I guess in terms of my thoughts on, uh, Train Sim World 5, I guess I'll update that on that. Just for the fun of it. Um... <laughs> so, uh... Last week, actually, or a couple weeks ago, I guess, depending on how you look at it. Um, Dovetail actually did a uh, live stream on the uh, on the West Coast Mainline route from London to Milton Keynes, which of course will be one of the base routes for for Trains World Five. Um, <coughs> but um, it seems that live stream, well, I say the live stream seems that route has actually gone over well with uh, with a lot of people. Apparently, there's a lot of missing services and bug glitches and everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> although to be fair, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Um, you know, stop tell games. Of course, they're gonna rush something out to you know get their money back and stuff. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I guess the uh, West Coast Mainline Rail hasn't actually gone over well with uh, the community. And actually, today, it's actually when I'm recording this video, they're actually doing the uh, live stream on the uh, San Bernardino line. Um, but uh, I haven't actually been able to view that stream yet as of when I'm recording this video, so I can't give my thoughts on that just yet. Um, and I, nope, that's all I can say. <laughs> Other than that, everything is the same old, same old. Oh, hang on, there's a, uh, a station here. Oh, yeah. Is it like a harbor here? Yeah, there is, huh? Interesting, it's just like a station on the uh, Rocky Mountain here. Interesting, okay. Nice. All right, there you have it. Yeah, there's a little town here. Interesting. I like it. Yeah. Well, then I guess, um, I saw this, this part where I asked you guys what do you guys think of the uh, British Columbia route so far. Um, I should say that this route does cost the usual five dollars or five US dollars. Um, I gotta be honest with you though, the one to conclusion is a little bit disappointing. Um, only uh, three locomotives, two of which are the same local type. Uh, but you know different deliveries and only a handful of uh, rolling stock all of which is freight so Yeah, and the route itself like I said is linear so you don't really have that many different places to go to 
on this route. So, yeah. So, uh, let me know. Let me know what you guys think of this route then. Just in terms of trade summer three news, uh, well, it's not really news, but we still don't know when the surveyor's coming. Yeah. Do you know something else? Something I just, I just realized. Well, I just realized. But something I've just come to mind. All the way back in January, they said about the surveyor two shouldn't be too far away. Keep in mind that was back in January. It is now September. So, <laughs> yeah, shouldn't be too far away was a lie. Yep. So as for when Survey 2 is coming to Train Summer 3, we still have absolutely no idea. Oh, and by the way, Train Summer 3 is now three years old. Yep, that is correct. Train Summer 3 released in uh, August of 2021, and it is now September of 2024, so this game is now just over three years old. And the surveyor is still nowhere to be seen. So I got no idea. When the survey is coming. I do still think it will come at some point, but uh, I don't know when. Uh, I, I don't know. I might be sure it's going to come this year at this point, you know. So, that's a shame. Because I've been waiting, man. I've been waiting for them to release the survey, but i still got no idea when it's coming. Even the city of this file is kind of just same. It's just all trees and river and stuff, and that's kind of it. Yeah. So, I don't know, let me know what you think of this route. Would you buy it, or is this one worth skipping? Or have you already bought this route? Because, because, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a month late to reviewing this route, so, um, yeah. <laughs> So if any of you guys actually got impatient and decided to just go out and buy this route and and stuff. Yeah. I know I'm late to this video, but you know, because I already done the four other train reviews, you know, back in July, I figured it was time to change these up a little bit. So yeah. Alright, we're approaching uh, Port Edward station. I should pretty soon once we be reaching our destination. That's nice. Alright. Another barn. Hope it's not communist. <laughs> ah, there's somebody with their boombox outside because of course there is. Alrighty then. Well, we're there. Um. So actually, where are we stopping? Are we stopping at the? Uh, oh, that's right. We're about to wrap the coal mine. Okay. All right. So basically, unload the coal or something. Let's we'll see. Oh. And I forgot to watch my speed. Okay. That's nice. Alright, I guess we're slowing down. Make it slow down for me. I think because I ran the red light, the uh, the score doesn't actually matter anymore, so, yeah. Oh, well. I don't really care about the score in this game anyway, because it serves no purpose. Okay, well, can you give me back control, please? I'm gonna come to a dead stop. Okay, thankfully not. Okay. Alrighty. More box cars over there. Yeah. More red lights coming up. Even though there's should be nothing in front of us. Well, but anyways, <laughs> would be hilarious if I wound up crashing into like another train or something.
Alrighty then. Yeah, they lose Cruz at 25. Now my ears itchy. Bridge. Yeah. Well, the most I can tell you about this route. Scenery is... Yeah. It's okay, I guess. Um... It's just because it's nothing that we haven't really seen before in this game, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's very tall trees, though. That's interesting. So then, um... Alright, one more to go until our stopping marker. Yeah. Very tall trees. Yes. Oh, this is a very weird looking yard. What is this? It's like all these different tracks. Huh. Interesting. Okay, this is something I've never had before. It's like a big junction of some kind, huh? Weird. Is that realistic? Hmm. Actually, this is not even based on... Well, I know it's based on something, but is it like actually like realistic to real life, or is it just kind of like a fictional route, but based on real life series pieces? I don't know. This is weird, though. Look at all these tracks. I'm guessing this is where they can store like mile-long freight trains or something. I don't know. Well, here we are. Um, well, almost half a mile to go. Yeah. All right, this is the uh, other coal mine. Yeah. What about to go on here? We have um, piles of coal. That's a fork left over there. Okay, so this is when we come to a stop here. Alright, let's come to it. Let's just start slowing down here just because it's. Yeah, we've got heavy blows and all, we'll be able to stop in time. This light's green. Let's put over there. Alright, and... Bring it to a stop here. Oh, there's another lifter thingy. And here we are. Can I unload the hopper cars, or this gonna, is this gonna be the end of the scenario? Oh, we're stopped. And if they give me any further commands. I think the snare is broken. Okay, I'll give it a minute to, to, to maybe respond and... Okay, can I at least get off the train, please? Does it get the camera off the train? There we go. Alright, let's take a look around here then since we're here. 
So there's this coal mine then. Um, I don't actually see anywhere to actually unload the opera cars. Hmm. Well, I have a big pile of coal here. Let's have this crane thingy. Actually, I think this could be used for like um, um, loading up container cars or something. Oh yeah, this container's right here. <laughs> Duh. Is there locals here? No, we're the only people here. Oh. Actually, are we the only drivable train this whole thing? Oh, I think we are. Well, um... I think the game is supposed to end here, but I think because I, because it doesn't work properly, I think we actually, um... Thing. Oh. Okay. Oh, points lock still? Hmm. Yeah. Alright, well... I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't know if we're supposed to do anything else, but it hasn't, it's not giving me any more objectives, so I think I'm just going to assume that the scenario is complete. And, yeah, well, you know what? Well, That's a pretty good way to, pretty good place to end anyway. We're here at the uh, coal mine and stuff, and, um, yeah, like I said, there are no more objectives. So, um, yeah, well, if this if this is the end of the scenario, then, uh, then well, I guess the end of the scenario, although this is supposed to be, well, if we're supposed to do other things here, then, uh, well, I don't know. I think this scenario might be broken. All right. Well, you know what? If there is something, if we are supposed to do something else in this scenario, then do let me know. But if this is the end, then, well, I guess it's the end. So, yeah. All right. I think I'm breaking this video on at this point. So, um, yeah. Well, like I said, a good place to end it. So, you know what? I'm just rambling on now. So, let's just end the video here because it doesn't have anything else to do. So, uh, there you have it, then. That is the British Columbia route here in uh, Train Smear 3. Like I said, let me know what you think of this route. Uh, would you buy it, or have you already bought it and stuff? And, uh, well, do you think it's good value for money? And uh, please let me know. Uh, for now, though, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I need to go blow my nose because it's completely full of, uh, well, stuff. Um, so, I yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in whatever I make next.